Welcome to another episode of Jackman Radio. I am your host, Mike Jackman, and I am joined today by the legendary singer and frontman of the Mighty Mighty Boston's, uh, one of the greatest bands, one of the greatest Boston bands up there with Aerosmith, The Cars, um, you know, any bands you can think of that are associated with Massachusetts. Uh, Mr. Dickie Barrett. Dickie, how you doing today, man? I'm doing good. I see you put your, your full name down down here in the corner. I just put Dickie. I, I, I wish I wrote Barrett. That's okay. It helped. Yeah. Can you fix that in post? I can try. I'm actually... Right, so what do you want to talk about? We're well, talk I'm... To Tom Brady? What are we talking? I mean, Tom Brady... This is, a said toucher, he... is this Toucher and Rich? No, this isn't Toucher and Rich. It's not, it's not Sports Drive? What we... I mean, we, we can do... We can touch on sports. I mean, you know, Brady said he was going to be coming back in some capacity with the Patriots. Do you have any insight on that? Some kind of return to Gillette Stadium. He's going to come back in some capacity. Gosh, I, I feel... Like, I don't know anything. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I mean, he's probably going to no. suit up. He's going to put a Patriots uniform on. He's going to throw the ball. Oh, I doubt that. But I'm sure they got some kind. I mean, he's doing like, do you see the ridiculous commercials he's doing now where he's crying? Like they're giving him results of some test. I don't own a television. Well, that's good. <laughs> you're this New you're, England television. You're, you're a smart feller there, Dickie, as my grandfather <laughs> used to say. You're either a smart feller or a fart smeller. That's what my grandfather would say. <laughs> But uh, no, man, I, I mean, feel like we had the same grandfather. Well, we uh, I I grew up in Massachusetts. Uh, I was born in Framingham. What, what town? Framingham. Okay. Born in Framingham, spent 10 years in Ashland and all my family. Route nine. Lived. Hell yeah. I got I got trapped on Route 9 by the Natick Mall one time on, on uh, Black Friday. I didn't realize it was Black Friday. <laughs> but uh, my grand my grandparents lived in Hudson. So I spent a lot of time in Hudson near the Assabet River. And um, which might explain a few things. Um, yes. What to, so what I, I now you, look at you differently. Did you grow up in Boston proper or what part of uh, Mass did you, did you Norwood, say? Norwood, Massachusetts. My mother and father still live in Norwood, Massachusetts. Oh, nice. That's that's my town. Yeah. I got arrested old... one time for stealing a shopping cart on Route 9 in Framingham. Oh, really? It's very young. And uh, my drunken buddy was in the shopping cart. And we're rolling it down Route 9. And the, the car pulled up next to us. And the guy was like, what are you assholes doing? Yeah, I didn't have like an you, answer. Well, you're so the I, original, I, I wouldn't, original I jackass. Arrested, but they brought us in. They brought yeah. us in. Well, I feel like back then you could probably get away with a lot more. My, my uncle got pulled over one time by some stadies in Massachusetts. And let's just say there was certain things confiscated. And then he was told to go on his way. So... Stadies is a good Massachusetts word, huh? I don't yeah. Think they, they don't call them stadies here. I'm in you, Arizona, you, by the way. Okay, Arizona. So, yeah, I don't know. I know it's hot. It's, it's been hot here, man. I'll tell you, for uh, New England, 90 degrees here is like, uh, might as well be Arizona. Yeah, what's that all about? Real hot summer, huh? Yeah, the last couple of weeks I've been, you know, I'm, I'm a larger fellow, as you can see. I've been sweating my, my brow off. You look but okay the, to me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> what where are you now so, you so i'm in from uh, I, yeah i live in new hampshire now i live in peterborough oh, nice yeah nice you have a family there uh my mom lives about 20 minutes from here uh no i'm a single guy and i live with my brother and um yeah my sister uh lives down in virginia so she left new england uh, nice and my father passed away a few years ago but he did grow up in dorchester and selfie so, ah, an Irishman. And, uh, yep, an Irishman, and Good my guess, mother, right, right, right on the nose, man. My uh, my mother also Irish, grew up in uh, Somerville and Watertown. Irish and Irish, a rare yeah, combination. I, yeah, exactly. I don't like whiskey or beer or anything like that. You don't? No, I do, but we can't do oh. that yet. So we're doing we're doing this right now. Ah, plug, there little, you go. Little plug that's for the, Duncan. Tony yes. Tap Water. Yeah. America runs on Duncan. <laughs> so um, I, I was really excited uh, to see that you're. you're they don't be... have it here. I, I don't have one. I have. There's a Dunkin' Donuts not too far. Yeah. What do they got out there? Uh, Krispy Kreme or not Tim Hortons? They got Tim Hortons in Canada, which I was just in uh, July. That's like their Dunkins up there. there. There's more and more Dunkins coming out west, but um, 
there was an agreement. I don't think it was Tim Hortons. It was uh, some other horrible donut store, chain store in California. And I think Dunkin' Donuts and them made an agreement that neither one would cross the Mississippi. <laughs> and then whatever the California one was, no one really wanted it to cross the Mississippi. No one was dying for it. But then I remember I was in California. God, it was 10 years ago now. And a Dunkin' Donuts opened up over in um, Atwater Village in, in the L.A. area. And uh, I was like there day one, first day, to lined up to get my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And it was me and just nothing but guys from Massachusetts in line. Oh, this is great. I'm so glad this place opened up. <laughs> All Red Sox hats and Celtic shirts waiting to get there. And then we met there every day until I moved to Arizona. But they, we do have a Dunkin' Donuts, but it's, uh, it's out in Cottonwood, near where yeah. I live here. Bit of a haul. Yeah, so far, this is not what you bargained for as a podcast, right? No, I love it. I like the more organic stuff, man. I, I, <laughs> I sometimes feel like I'm a, little, I'm a little bit too buttoned up. I mean, I do a mixture of stuff, man. I cover politics, comedy, music, uh, film, but um, our listeners like I've just been regular- involved in all of those things you've got a good guest then yeah politics well, you're, on a comedy you're, you're, you're show. dynamic yeah music I've, I'm, where'd you go oh i'm right here picture freeze all right yeah so uh norwood is that the uh is that the auto mile like ernie bach is that ernie bach jr That's the auto mile ernie bach jr friend of mine very it's been very very good to me over, through the years he was good to the Boston's. He would donate when we'd have the hometown throwdown. He would always match whatever we made at our fundraiser. And uh, he would match that. Terrific guy. Hometown hero. We love Ernie in Norwood. That's awesome. Yeah, I've never met him, but my, my brother, Eric, my twin brother, actually, um, who is uh, in politics now working for Bobby's campaign here in New Hampshire, he actually met uh, Ernie Bach Jr. out at an event, a political event, some years back, yeah. and uh, got invited to his uh, Bachtini contest that he used to have at his house, and they had a... Bachtini. So he was at the at the Bach um, compound. Yeah, he, he wasn't wearing a, he wasn't wearing a bikini or anything. Those were other people, but uh, oh. he was there with uh, some musician, not some musician, a very popular musician, Ernie hired, whose name escapes me. He's Mel Gibson's son-in-law. He's a oh, guitar, yes. really guitar guy. Uh, it'll probably come back to me, but I guess he's got a whole Beatles. I'm a huge Beatles nut too, so I love that Ernie Box really big on the Beatles, and yeah. that's great that he was always supported you guys. And he seems like he's he's done a lot for the Boston music scene and you know for music and mess. Oh, uh, Kyle Wayne Shepherd was the. Uh, Kyle or is it Kenny Ken, okay. Kenny Wayne Shepherd? Ernie was maybe okay. Ernie was out on the uh, road this summer with um, the Hollywood Vampires. The Hollywood Vampires are uh, Johnny Depp, um, Alice Cooper, Joe Perry, and uh, I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. But he, but um, they have friends with Ernie, and he was out touring around with them. And then Ernie sent me some pictures of himself and he was playing like standing next to Alice Cooper and Johnny Depp playing they let him play guitar so it was a, he was like this is was a thrill for me um yeah but uh, Ernie's they, a good guy they, yeah they did a stop in New Hampshire too I, I didn't make it to the show but uh, I always joke like the Hollywood vampires I mean you, you don't really regular dudes don't really dress like that you don't really see people dress like no. that that's really, that's really, that's funny you should mention that because Ernie had on a scarf and I was, and I wrote back to him, I go, did they make you wear the scarf? And he's like, no, no, I, <laughs> I really like the way they dress because he, I was like, I've never seen you in a scarf, Ernie. Yeah, I think the, the Vampires was like an offshoot from the Hollywood days when Alice Cooper was still drinking with Harry Nilsson and John Lennon and Ringo Starr oh. and Mickey... Mickey Dolan's those old pictures. Yeah. yeah. And I think, whole, I think Alice Cooper is one of the only ones who's still around because he stopped drinking. I think Laurel can the Laurel Canyon crew. Yeah. That whole scene uh, Mickey Dolan's there. is still with us, right? Oh, that's true. He's the last monkey. Yeah. 
I saw uh, I saw Mickey with uh, Mike Nesmith before Nez passed away. Uh, they did the Mike and Mickey show down in Beverly, Mass. It was a beautiful show, man. Good you stuff. You monkeys fan too? Um, I more recently I've grown to appreciate the monkeys. I didn't. I didn't. Tremendous songwriting. It's difficult yeah. to argue with that songwriting. They had the well, best. They, they were brill building writers. Yeah, Neil I Diamond mean, wrote monkey songs. Oh, I don't know if I knew that, but. I know yeah. that Nez afterwards kind of had a, a cool, interesting solo career. Like he really pioneered the alt country and country Western stuff. Yeah. And, no uh, one I mentions think... Mike Nesmith without mentioning what his mother invented. White out, right? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Was it? Yeah. You're right. Good one. Yeah. But, um, you know, speaking of fashions, and I was just talking to Eric about this earlier, my brother, the plaid, the mighty, mighty Boston's and the plaid and the suits, man. Like, we, you know, you guys would show up dressed in the nines for your shows. Uh, what was what was the idea yes. behind that? Is we that just kind of put into it? You did, yeah. Um, it's we weren't the first people stayed, so uh, it just appealed to us early on. We wanted to separate ourselves. We formed the band in, in an era that was um, during garage rock, and that was going on in Boston. So you could think of like bands like the Del Fuegos or the Dogmatics or the Outlets and the, all of them were great, great, just great music scene, great bands. And uh, we wanted to separate ourselves and maybe we overdid it, but that's sort of what the idea was. This is who we'll be. This is what we'll look like. This is our identity. And um, and I, I don't think there's ever come a day where I've ever regretted it. It, it required traveling with a lot of suits and it required, okay, you, you got to be ready you know, an hour before the show. So it took some of that planning. But once we got the hang of it, we enjoyed it. One time I saw Kiss um, putting on their makeup before the show. I was friends with a guy named Doc McGee who managed Kiss. And uh, he brought me backstage. He goes, come on, you got to see this. And we went backstage and they're, all four of them are lined up. Each one has a, their own makeup table with the, with the lights around the mirror. And they're all applying their own makeup to themselves, uh, putting on the huge shoes and the enormous like cod piece and the, t the chest plates and all that. And then, and then, I, and I didn't feel so bad for myself. And yeah. It's a plaid suit and a tie. I don't have it so bad. Well, it's recognizable. And it, I think it is iconic and it's, it, I, I, you associate it with, with that, with that era, but also of course with the band, and um do you appreciate yeah. the effort tell me that i do appreciate the effort thank you very much i do i do because got I, that from I, my mother richard they're coming to see you play they're paying good money to see you play the least you could do is put on a clean shirt and a nice jacket That's yeah exactly impression of my mother well i i play the drums so i i have to admit i don't usually wear a suit suit coats when I play because I um, I have in the past I wore a tuxedo at one of our gigs that we did and I just sweat right through it and it was uh, it looked good but you know it was a little, little Joe little Joe our drummer Joe Joe Sorois Joe the kid he um, he took to wearing vests like like the one I'm wearing now and then tie and jacket because he needed the mobil mobility of his arms that's true yeah yeah and, and as a that. drummer you would know that Oh yeah, you gotta. I usually go short sleeve. Yeah, I like to. <laughs> I go short sleeve. Yeah, the go best. short sleeve too. There's, there's short sleeve college shirts. So um, one one of the reasons we got together today for this podcast it was to not only talk music and you know being fellow mass boys, but um, we're both supporting RFK Jr. for president. And uh, I'll tell you, I've, I've, from what I've read, you've taken a lot of flack for that, man. I, I mean, everybody does. Nobody takes more flack than Bobby, but. What? I don't think it's flack. I think, you know, people are, um, people are charged. They're also, it's, we're also living in a time when, it, when everything is very polarized, polarizing and everything's, um, it's a lot of division, but I don't look at it as flack. That's, you know, I, I, I didn't casually say, you know, th say, I'm just going to support this guy. I, 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 I know him. I've met him. I've read his books. I understand what he's talking about. I listen to the things he has to say. And 
with all of that, I, I chose him as, as somebody that I would support to be our president. So it's not, you know, and anybody and, and other people feel differently and that's fine. But I don't I don't look at it as flack. You know, that's there's always going to be the other side. There's always going to be someone else. You know, well, what about my candidate? And I'll put my guy up against anybody's. So then we'll see what happens. I'm hoping for the very best. But I'm not, um, so far I'm not, you know, disappointed with the, with the choices I'm making. And that goes across the board. I'm very happy with my, my choices. Yeah, I feel you there, man. I feel you there, Dickie. Um, I've been a fan of RFK Juniors for a long time. Um, I, uh, you know, I studied politics in college. Uh, Did been you? Invo been involved in campaigns since I was 17 years old. And, uh. I was over the moon when I found out that he was going to run for president. I, ne I never thought he would be a candidate. Couldn't believe it. I c really couldn't believe it. When he announced, I was like, oh, my gosh, really? And uh, like everything he does, you know, he's going to put his head down and it's full steam ahead and he's going to put his whole heart into it. So I've been a fan for, for a long time, too. Yeah. I met him years ago on the TV show. Um, Jimmy Kimmel introduced me to him. Because he knew I was from Massachusetts and a bit of a Kennedy file, and um, I was thrilled to meet him. I couldn't couldn't believe it. it you know, it's Bobby Kennedy's son. And then we did some a couple years ago. We put together a song for for um, medical freedom rally he was doing in in D.C. Um, that was against mandating the. Um, to COVID vaccine and uh, he couldn't have been nicer. I liked working, he asked me to, you know, produce a song for him. So I did and enjoyed that experience. And then shortly, not too long after that, he announced he was gonna run for president. Yeah, I, I've kind of had the same experiences. I, I think he's very genuine. Um, you know, when you're talking to him in person, he's very uh, dialed in and, and uh, listens and, and he has his convictions. And, and like you were saying, you know, there's going to be disagreements or the other side, people who, who disagree. But I just feel like Bobby has, since he's entered, the media has treated him with a lot of disdain, like MSNBC who will attack him and cover him and, and smear him and call him names and they won't let him respond. They, they won't have him on to respond to what they say. MSNBC. Do you know what the MS stands for? Microsoft. <laughs> I think. Some point, at some point in Bill Gates' career, he decided, I'm going to need a news channel. <laughs> and so MSNBC was born. Yeah. So... You would think, you know, it doesn't take too much thinking to realize that MSNBC has whose best interests in mind? Probably not Bill Gates's. Not the people, not the American. No. That's the same network that kicked off Phil Donahue and Jesse Ventura for being against the Iraq war when it mattered. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, Ventura had a show, and, and, and this is my Ventura impression. They brought me up, Dickie, and they said... Are you for or against the Iraq War? And I said, I'm against it. And they let they let me go. So they actually paid him his salary for his show that he had, but didn't have him. <laughs> didn't they paid him not to be on to not do the show, basically. So they they basically bought his silence at that time, and they fired Phil Donahue, who was outspoken against Iraq. So I don't know why anybody would trust anything that those people say at this point, you know. But there's still a lot of people who do. No, we don't. We don't have to. We don't have to listen to them. No, and they've, much, they've so much of it. So much of the the media and so much of the news is compromised. So, you know, if that's where you're getting your information from, here's to you. But well, uh, I think it's good to get a smattering from everywhere and read as much as you can. Um, I, I don't. I. You know, because in mainstream, there's you read between the lines, of course, there's going to be information and basic facts, incredible stuff. And then when you look at maybe something from the indie media, there's a different take on it. But I try to look at a story from a few different angles and then suss out for myself what what I think the real story is and kind of go from there. 
you know? That sounds reasonable. That sounds yeah. thoughtful. And I think, you know, Bobby's run his campaign that way. And uh, I love that he's willing to talk to anybody, man. What happened in this country where we can't just talk to each other, even if we no. have disagreements? No conversations. But, Those days are gone, my friend. No debate. No, that's it. We'll tell you what to think. We'll tell you who your candidate is. We're not going to discuss it. And that's why we're, we're at where we're at. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. And, and uh, you know, so I, I remember reading the news when, when the Boston's broke up and some of the speculation that the media was engaging in, including Rolling Stone, that it may have had something to do with, you know, your recent work with RFK Jr. and some of your views. Is that, is that, was that an accurate assessment or what was, what was it like kind of early last year when all that broke out? for you i it was around the same time that I, I started working on that song with bobby and also it was became um my television job which the tv show and the network is owned by disney and it became clear that if you wanted to be a disney employee you had to um get a covid shot and i didn't i didn't want to do that so that combined with the fact that I was working with Bobby Kennedy made um, certain members of my band uncomfortable at the time and made it clear to me that they didn't want to be aligned with them. And, I, and that's fine. They have, they have that right. So, you know, what, what was the question? What was it like? Yeah. I mean, what was that? Yeah. What just kind of, you know, um, I have all... I went with my own convictions. I went with my own heart. I went with my own thoughts. I felt like, you know, I felt like p people, there shouldn't be, you know, medical mandates. I felt like that, uh, you know, the government shouldn't tell us what to inject into ourselves for any reason. We can start there. And then I also felt like I should be able to make my own decisions. I felt, I smelled, you know, it all smelled funny to me. I didn't like you know, the way things felt at the time. I didn't think it, any of it was being handled right by anybody. So I made a choice that others and friends and people I know made different choices. And, and many of the people I know made the same choice. But uh, it ended up, you know, because of who I am, um, was aligned with and because of my decisions uh members of the band didn't want to continue wow i mean yeah in, in any band and um especially when you're talking about a band with eight or nine people and then of course you had at that time there was still four original members from the early 80s sticky it's difficult to do the math i'm not i'm not a. I can't um let me think. Let me think about that. The original members. There was me. There was Joe. There was uh, little Joe. Tim. Around that. I mean, I mean, everybody that's ever been in the band, they're still friends of mine, and they, we still, um, you know, we we experienced a lot together. Yeah. I mean. Um... Like I said, I'm a musician too, and I'm in a band, and there's five of us, and I've been playing with um, a couple of the guys since 2008. So you're talking about 15 years, and you know we didn't we didn't do any shows or practice for a number of months in 2020, and um, there was differences of opinion, and I really I have a way that I feel about it, and other people have a way they feel about it, but I, I still believe we can people can still maintain relationships and exist and work together in various capacities. And I really hated seeing what happened with friendships, with, you know, business stuff, with bands, with families over, over the pandemic. I mean, it was like, it's like heartbreaking to see. And, but I, I'm, I really agree with what you're saying. You got to stand up for your conviction. And um, I never chastised yeah. I never chastised or belittled or asked anybody what they did um, or, told them that they they shouldn't do that because i i'm someone who believes in freedom of choice and you know bodily autonomy and and you have to do what's right for yourself and if people are really your friends and they love you and care about you they may not agree with what your choices but they should at least still 
respect where you're coming from. And I feel like we just lost so much of that because there was such a fear campaign and so much propaganda and in ignorance blasted every single day in a continuous loop for two years that it just blew people's minds. Agreed. I think uh, and, you're right, sir. So I, I, now here we are, Dickie, they're, they're, it's looking like they're revving it back up again, man. And I just don't think, I don't think a lot of people are going to go along with it again. I don't know. What, what do you think? They want I didn't bring go along with it the last time. I'm, I, I, you know, they're not going to get me to go, oh, oh I, I was wrong last time. I don't, you know, what, whatever, you know, we'll cross those bridges when we come to them. But, and uh, yeah, I missed out on some good shows in Boston, too, because I didn't want to go along with it. Justin Hayward was playing at the city winery and and uh, I had a ticket that I purchased and what happened? no dice. Uh, you had to either get, you know, it was either the shot or, or, or a test. And uh, yeah, I was willing to do the test. And it didn't come back Boy. in time, <laughs> which I, which looking back, it's like, I should have just been like, you know what, F you, I'm not going, but I really tried to be diplomatic about it. And, and I really, I still feel that right. way, man. I still, because I know people have disagreements and they have big disagreements, but you, it doesn't mean you have to start acting like a child. And that's really what the government and the media treat us like children. And um, that's what I have a lot of contempt for. So I think you got to stand by your convictions, and I, I applaud you for that, man. You know, especially in the friggin' entertainment industry. I can't imagine that that was, uh, you know, you had a lot of uh, supporters, you know, because they wanted to keep their job, you know, within the entertainment You'd world. You'd be surprised. I had quite a, I had a lot of supporters. That's good. Um, you know, is it the vocal majority? No, but I've, I've got plenty of people in my life, plenty of friends, and plenty of supporters. I mean, I remember and, the stuff that go ahead. I was going to say, I remember some of the segments that Jimmy Kimmel was airing. And so I'm sure he had had a way that he felt about it. Or, or, did you guys ever have a discussion about that specifically? Or we had was plenty that of discussions of and, yeah. and, uh, you know, not, we, we never had a problem discussing things. He's, he's, uh, he felt his way. I felt my way. And we, when we spoke, on the issues he you know he said what he had to say i said what i had to say there was never uh, any um problem for us discussing things yeah, but that's good you know we didn't see eye to eye either yeah well since then you formed this this new all-star band that's like to me it's like in the vein of like the traveling wilburys or the highway men or the hollywood vampires uh, the def the defiant. Talk to me about the defiant, like how how that came to be, and 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 what you know, how you guys got together. Well, I wanted to make music, and um, I wanted to find people to make music with. So I contacted people that I felt like would be good, and. Uh, to see if writing songs together would work. And it turned out it did. And we've, um, we created an album, which is coming out October 27th. And uh, we released a single about two weeks ago now. And uh, I think it's good. I think people seem to like it. You've heard it, right? I listened to it for the first time the other day, man. I, I really dug it. And uh, I love the video. I love the, the vibe of the video, the message. There seems to be a little bit of they live stuff going on, a little bit of, you know, with the obey flashes. And um, I've got the video here, man. We can play it, play it for the crowd. It's uh, it's about four minutes. Okay. Are you, are you cool if we play it right now? Fired up. All right, let's do it. All right, folks, this is The Defiance with their new song and music video, Dead Language. Here we go. Well, I can go outside and leave this space. I've got the air 
nasty my face And I feel awkward and out of place I've got everything I need right here At my fingertips, literally There's an app for everything So I go back to reality It's clearly overrated, my dear Why? Who's got that kind of time? And now we want lots of this in the land of the lost. A pretty fabricated universal eyes are all for us. Let's be together, language and the time that you cost. Thank the Lord for our possible fall. A sweet little way. Call it from the curb to the door. I had some deep conversations with a little before. I should have died in 27 like my years before. But I was too busy having fun. Plus, who's got that kind of time? And I can't dance and don't drink wine, so what the hell is in it for me? Why? Who's got that kind of time? And now we walk like zombies in the land of the lost. The free fabricated universe arrives from all across. Rest in peace, your dead language, and the time that you call. Thank the Lord for a possible throne. A sweep of the way. Call it from the curtain of the door. I've had some big conversations with a living with four. I should have died 27 like my years before. But I was too busy having fun. But it is possible to make people contented with their servitude. You can provide them with bread and circuses, and you can provide them with endless amounts of distractions and propaganda. And now we walk like zombies in the land of the lost. The brave fabricated universe rises up from the rest of the beach. Your language and the time that you call. Thank the Lord for a possible fall. I'll sleep at the well. Crawl it from the curtain at the door. I've had some deep conversations with the living room floor. I should have died in 27 like my years before. But I was too busy having fun. And now we're too busy getting Thanks there for you go, that. everybody. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much. Dead, dead language by the Defiant, everybody. Man, there's a lot going on in that video. Uh, you, you crammed a sure lot in is. there. It's Johnny Rio from New Hampshire on the base. Joey Briggs from uh, Johnny Rio is in the Street Dogs. Joey Briggs from the Joey LaRocca from the Briggs. He plays guitar. Greg Camp. He was in Smash Mouth and on drums. Pete Parada. He played for 10 years, maybe 15 years with The Offspring. And um, he was in Face to Face. Exceptional drummer, exceptional band, great bunch of guys. And um, that was called Dead Language. It was fun to make, fun to write, fun to record. And uh, look for our album coming out October 27th. And what's the name of the album? Are you going to be at the show next week? I'm I'm going to try. I really do want I'm planning on being there. And actually, thanks for bringing that up. Let me bring that information up. Okay. It's next week. Bring it up so I'm, I'm, so I'm sure it's find out if my information is correct. Yeah, here we go. Or okay. I'm so I'm supposed to be on a plane right now. This is, <laughs> this is Rock for RFK Jr. 
featuring live music from Brian McPherson, Sweet Babylon, Casey Darren, with a special guest appearances from Dickie Barrett and Johnny Rio. And this from is going to be Dogs, Boston's, and the now the Defiant. Yeah, will be there. So... Johnny's from New Hampshire, by the way. Oh, is he? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah definitely got to connect with him. Uh, I, I got a former coworker who was obsessed with Street Dogs, so she's going to be. Ah, she'll be. She'll be uh, excited to hear that. And uh, so this is going to be Wednesday, September thirteenth at seven p.m. at the American Legion Post Twenty Seven in Londonderry, New Hampshire. And it's a suggested $5 donation to help Robert, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And uh, sounds like it's going to be a fun time, man. It will be fun. Flying in for it. Support Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Hang out with some old friends. I'm sure I love oh. being in New Hampshire. Oh, we and lost uh, you there for a sec. If you could make it, make it. Yeah, oh, I definitely want to come and say hi and... and uh, Maybe we can do an Irish car bomb. Although I don't know if you are you, if you, are you still. <laughs> yeah, we can do you? an Irish car bomb, but call my sponsor. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be next week. And um, how long are you in town for? Just a couple days, or can't tell you that, dude. <laughs> I tell you that uh, people call. Hey, you said you were going to be in town for a week. Why didn't you call me? Yeah, where are you? Um, where, are you where are you at? I'm, pre I'm pretty much in and out. I'm. I'm we're gonna. Me and Johnny. Johnny lives in Texas. We'll fly in the day before and um, attend that event and then probably leave the day after. I got to cool. thank you for the interview and taking your time. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we got a couple of quick chats here. Can we go through one or two of the chats, Dickie? What are the chats? What does that mean? That's just people who are watching on the stream who, uh, you know, say hello or ask a question. This is people from, are watching this. Yeah, we got we, nobody oh, told me that. We have people. Yeah, people are watching. I we were Live just going to shoot the shit on Zoom. <laughs> All right, Anna's, just, I would have. <laughs> I would have worn a nice shirt. Hey, the vest. The vest covers it. Thank you. But this is so from. Got, uh, that's a question. From a, so he's a Whalers fan. A friend of mine, Jeff in Connecticut, still stands for the Whalers. He says, "Let's go." I love the mighty, mighty Boston's. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Whalers fan. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, man, if I remember That's correctly it? in the 90s, we would hear we would hear the impression that I get on uh, commercials for the Bruins, right? Or, or did you guys have a deal like with the Fleet Center or with Nesson or something? Or did they just love the song? No, I don't recall that at all, but um, no. The answer would be no. I didn't never made a deal with the Bruins, but if they played it, great. Love those Boston Bruins. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, no, man. I mean, I, I was a kid, uh, probably ten or eleven, when that song came out, and it, it was huge. I got to say, you know, just on a, on a note here, I would, uh, you know, we play it at parties, play it with family and friends, and the the pre-chorus scream, man. That was when we would get we get all Very hyped sweet. up. You know. And. Uh, well, yeah, that's what I so, made it for. Hype up people. Hype up the kids yeah. in Framingham. That's, yeah. <laughs> and my brother's informed oh, me. Here's this, another uh, chat. Look at this. So this is when Jason Allison won the seventh player award. The, the impression that I get was the theme for that. Oh, really? Okay. I, according to my brother. My brother's a hockey player. He knows more about hockey than I do. So. Is that your so, brother? Yeah, Eric Jackson. He's telling us that? And he's telling, he? us, he's telling us he's telling us he's in the <laughs> the killer is in the house. He's in the other <laughs> he's in the other room, yeah. He's, he's the got roommate. a nice profile picture. Yeah, yeah, the facial hair is pretty dialed in there. That that's from a few years ago though, I'm not gonna lie. It's uh <laughs> <laughs> you gonna why are you gonna blow it, blow his cover? That's a it's Eric, a recent it's <laughs> Eric, come out of the other room and show your face. Walk in behind your brother. Come on. Dickie wants to say hi, Eric. If, if, yeah, come on in. If you can hear us. As, as Trump would say, he's a great Don't just guy. Chat. He does a lot of great things. <laughs> I, I yeah, can you send do pretty him. good impressions. <laughs> Who else do you do? Um, you, well, we, we do. Uh, we, do Al, we, Ventura. we do Alex Jones. He's talking about Texas earlier, Dickie. Why don't you come down to Texas? Okay. We'll go down to the gun range. We'll get some barbecue. Okay. Hey. There he we is. Got George Book. We got George. Okay, here we go. So I had a Dickie. Okay. Hey, what's up, Dickie? Hey, 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 look at that guy. 
How are you, Eric? Good, How's everything man. going Thanks. out there? Everything's going well, man. We're uh, hustling and, yeah. and working hard, and uh, we're, you know, really looking forward to this concert hey, you're putting you on. Work, Thank, you work. You. you work for Bobby, right? Is that what he told me? Yeah. Yeah. You do. So you're part of the New Hampshire crew. Yeah, the New Hampshire team. Nice, real nice. Yeah. Thank so, you. Thank you for doing this, man. And I'm looking forward to meeting you next week. So you'll definitely be there. Yeah, I should. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll be there. Get there a little bit early. Come up and say hello. Me and Johnny will be kicking around with with uh, Casey, Casey Darren, and uh, I think it's going to be a great time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll I'll see you next week. I'll give you back the mic. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, bye, Eric. Bye, Eric. He froze. The clone. Oh, yeah, bring in the clones. But uh, yeah, hopefully, I I plan on being there. Um, we're sharing a car at the moment, so that can. Gotta be honest, logistic. I enjoyed talking to Eric more than I I enjoy talking to you. Whoa! I feel like you guys, I'm kidding. I swear, I'm I, I'm kidding. I, it's a horrible joke. I hope I didn't hurt your feelings. I'll give you the Biden one. If I were there, man, I'd take you out back and challenge you to do some push-ups <laughs> with corn pop. We're we're gonna we're is that Jill or is that is that my wife or my sister? Or you gotta that, work on that, your Biden. Is that corn pop? This is back. <laughs> When we're talking about the heart and soul of America, Dickie. Corn Pop's do, uh... tough, he's a tough dude. <laughs> I haven't done the Biden in a while. Do you, do you have any requests? Yeah. Can you do Bobby? Uh, I don't really have a Bobby one yet. I need I need to work on that. I, I, I've, i over the years, uh, tried to uh, do a JFK one. Uh, ask not what you what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I need to work on that a little <laughs> bit, but... But, uh, yeah, yeah, you do. You definitely do. But the uh, the Alex Jones is the bread and butter. That's the, that's the one I'm that's kind of one? known for. That's that's the big yeah. That's the big one. Um, yeah, that's the one that kind of gets. Oh, Lindsey Graham. I do Lindsey Graham. That's a more obscure one. All right. You know, send it, Senator Lindsey Graham down from the Carolinas. They're gonna lock me up with Donald Trump, but I'm okay with that. I look forward to going to Shawshank. <laughs> he looks forward to it. <laughs> That's the impression that I got. All right. Those are the impressions that I got, Dickie. So all right. All right, man. Well, so let me destroy the feed. Oh no. We broke the matrix. Yeah. Let me before I let yeah. you go, let me show the website for the Defiant. We're, we're, we're gonna pump this. Okay. We're gonna show the website. We're gonna show the website for the kids out there. All right. The Defiance official. So there's the home page. Ah. There's the, the the lineup, the the mug shots, as it were. And I don't uh, think I've ever been here before. Yeah, the defiantofficial.com, everybody. How do you get there? Um I think it's I think I put a link to it in the YouTube description here for our video. Okay. But yeah, if you just if you just go to your browser, just go to the defiantofficial.com. All right. I don't know if Jenny put this together or but no. uh Folks, we got merchandise here from the Defiant. We have the album coming out, as Dickie was saying, <laughs> next month. Infowars.com slash Defiant promo code uh, Red Pill Blue Pill Chew. And uh, I mean, this Defiant, this lineup is incredible. You got the guy from The Offspring. You got the guy from Smash Mouth. You got the guy from Mighty Mighty Bosses. They're all here, folks. They're coming together, and they are fighting the New World Order, one chord at a time. So yeah, there it is, folks. All right. Let's see, I don't think we have any other chats, but uh, I appreciate your time, Dickie, and I look forward to meeting you next week, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Hello, New Hampshire. Hello, Framingham and beyond. Say hi Absolutely. to your sister down south for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Say hello right. to your I'm brother again <laughs> in the other room. <laughs> We'll say hello. Pleasure talking to you. And tell them I'll see you next week. We will. All right. Take care, my man. Bye.